Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Red Gaming Tech Video.com video, we're going to be discussing as well as analysing tech news, which, as usual, has popped up in the past 24 or so hours. Hopefully, you're having an amazing day. I want to start this video with the RX 6800 XT. It's one of three SKUs which AMD are planning to show off at its uh, event, which, of course, will take place in just a few days' time. The 6800, the 6800 XT, and the 6900 XT will all be shown at this event. We've been over specs of these cards a couple of times now, and a lot of folks are really focused on the 6900 XT. It is the pinnacle of the stack, after all, featuring 80 compute units. But there is one thing about that GPU. It will be available in more limited quantities. In fact, AMD seem to be reserving this GPU for, well, their selves, at least initially with AIBs being able to release this GPU later on. In other words, it's going to be essentially like a Founders Edition card, and AIBs instead get access to the 6800 XT and lower-end SKUs. So this brings us, of course, to the performance information. Yesterday, I did leak um, synthetic results with stuff like Firestrike, and in those results, we did learn that the RTX 3080 and the 6800 XT are within spitting distance of one another, or the 6800 XT has a small advantage. But I now have performance data for some games, and I do want to say up front that I am not allowed to give specifics on a game-by-game -game basis, and I am not allowed to share slides, but I am allowed to discuss the averages and how uh, who, and who wins in general terms. So with that said, let's get into this. With the RX 6800 XT, AMD are planning to show 10 games, 1440p and 4K. At 4K native resolution, AMD will show 10 games with an average FPS of 90. Now, how does it stack up against the RTX 3080? I was told that the 6800 XT wins in five games at 4K, it draws as an indistinguishable FPS difference in two titles, and loses in three titles. So I say that again, the RTX 3080 loses in five games, and AMD win in five games, they draw on two games, and the RTX 3080 beats AMD's 6800 XT in three titles. But, if we crank the resolution down to just 1440p, things changed considerably because the RTX 3080 then loses in eight titles and only manages to beat AMD in two titles. This matches perfectly with numerous leaks that I've put out before. At higher resolutions, NVIDIA seem to have more of an, of an advantage compared to lower resolutions. And again, now I sound like a broken record, but this is most likely to do with the infinity cache and memory structure of these GPUs. Basically speaking, at lower resolutions, there's less strain, I suppose the best way of putting it, on the memory subsystem. Therefore, the infinity cache is better able to operate. Now, this does not mean that the 6800 XT is not capable of 4K gaming. As I just mentioned, it's either beating NVIDIA or quite close to NVIDIA in a number of benchmarks. But there are some caveats, and I want to get into those here. Again, I'm told that ray tracing performance, NVIDIA are ahead. Um, I'm told that it's closer to the performance of an RTX 2080 Ti in hardware-based ray tracing. That's no slouch, but it's also not as fast as, say, an RTX 3080. Roughly speaking, if you enable DLSS even at a higher quality setting and have hardware-based ray tracing on with an Ampere GPU, it's almost the same performance um, as not having DLSS, but also not having hardware-based ray tracing. In other words, it's very impressive. <laughs> to be really honest with you, it's really impressive. I'm testing this quite extensively with an RTX 3080 Founders Edition card, and uh, yeah, some other things too. But long story short, 
from what I understand, AMD do extremely well here, but there is some more stuff. I tried to do some more digging concerning an upsampling like tech, DLSS, I suppose you could say. Now, it's imperative to realize that DLSS is an NVIDIA proprietary technology. AMD cannot use it, even if they had exactly the same architecture, they cannot use the name because, again, it's NVIDIA's. But um, the way AMD seem to be running, uh, I'm going to call it DLSS AMD, but it's not that, so that is not the name. But just for simplicity's sake, I'm told that it, the cards can do this, but it seems to be an update to the drivers. And I was told that this is possibly coming in December, maybe early January. Um, I unfortunately do not have specifics as yet. I'm trying to find out, but to be honest, it probably by the point that I find out it's going to be, um, you know, the conference anyway. But I don't have specifics on how this works, but I am told that there is some type of upsampling technology. I believe from other whispers from other people that the quality is not as good as DLSS, but it's faster. However, I would take that with a pinch of salt because, well, yeah. Um, as for prices, and this is the interesting part, to my understanding, AMD have not decided on the prices yet. I've had a couple of sources speak to me about prices. And interestingly, when I first started to leak a lot of the RDNA2 stuff, so a while ago now, just before I released the Infinity Cache information, one of my sources told me that AMD's original plans were to undercut NVIDIA's offerings by a small but decent amount. For example, the 699 price of the RTX 3080, maybe AMD would charge, just an example figure, $50 cheaper. Again, it's not huge, but if someone offers you a $50 saving, you're not going to say, Eh, actually, I don't want 50 US dollars. It's decent. So this would mean, of course, assuming that went ahead, that people would be slightly tempted to purchase the card. However, allegedly, this was when AMD didn't know for certain how well they would be faring against NVIDIA's lineup. And now it seems that AMD actually do a little better than what they had originally anticipated, not by much, to my understanding, but by a little. Therefore, they are now debating, should we do this? Also, the release date is not yet decided. There were some rumours from both myself and a few others that we would see an early to mid-November launch, which is let's say, a week-ish after the CPU's debut. And I say a week-ish because, again, the time window was a little bit in flex for the GPUs. However, now I'm being told that this may not be the case. I'm unsure why this is, uh, that they don't know the date of the launch. Pure speculation on my part. Do not take this as a leak. Please take this as speculation. Me guessing based upon information which may or may not be true. It's possible that the reason they are debating this is supply and also making sure that they have as many cards as possible available in retail. To my understanding, AMD's supply should be reasonable, but the thing is, it doesn't take a particular genius to figure out that demand for GPUs is going to be high. Since NVIDIA's cards are basically sold out and they're trying to of course uh, provide inventory as fast as possible it basically means that AMD themselves are left with people who are hungry for a GPU and this is particularly true given if you're looking at the calendar now it's pretty much the end of October realistically let's say that they do launch the 15th of November that's just you know throwing a number out there if you think of it logically, a crap ton of people are going to want to purchase one of these GPUs for the Christmas period. Because, well, yeah, just going by what's happening in the world right now, 
some parts of the world are going to be on lockdown, so goodness knows what's going to happen. And even taking that out of the equation, traditionally, sales do very well in that period for obvious reasons. Therefore, AMD are going to be selling GPUs to, of course, their hardcore fans, but also to people who are somewhat on the fence and wouldn't necessarily... Well, let's just be honest, they wouldn't necessarily want to buy an AMD product. Maybe they prefer NVIDIA's architecture, or maybe they've not even used an AMD GPU. In other words, well, yeah, they've just got more potential customers. And it's going to be fascinating to me to see how all of this comes out. I guess this is another reason that we're going to see the 6700 series launch later on too. I... I'm going to be very fascinated to see what AMD actually do in terms of announcements for their cards, and also release timings. The Pinnacle solutions, again, the 6800 XT, the 6900, the RTX 3080, the RTX 3090, they're great, they're amazing, they drive the market forward, and they are the cards that, let's face it, most people would love to purchase if they had the cash. But... Volume sales, obviously, are cards such as, traditionally, just a few examples, the RX 480 or the GTX 970. You know, those kind of mid-range, lower offerings. So I do think that it's going to be very interesting to see as next year progresses, as I already have leaked the release dates and prices of the RTX 3050 and a couple of the 3060 GPUs, how all of this will stack up. As I was discussing the other day, one of the real benefits of the RDNA2 architecture is the fact that it is so scalable. And so because of that, you can wring, you can squeeze the blood out of the bloody orange, because, quite frankly, you are able to maximize the yields. The other benefit, too, is that the memory and other components on the GPU, theoretically speaking, would be more prolific, they would be easier to come by. GDDR6 memory is cheaper than GDDR6X, and yeah, you don't need to worry about that. On lower end SKUs, you could even outfit it with 14 GBPS, rather than 16, which is the rumoured configuration of the current solutions. So, yeah, I'm really hoping that we see a very competitive price from AMD. Um... And it's going to be very interesting also how AIB partners who service both NVIDIA and AMD take to marketing these two solutions. Because, let's say, someone like MSI, obviously they do create RTX 3080 solutions. I just recently reviewed the Gaming Edge Trio, which is a great card. But you can't market a, a GPU which people cannot buy at the end of the day. And this is not a slight against, um, you know, any company, at the end of the day, inventory is what it is, and, yeah, it's just, it's going to be very interesting to me how all of this plays out. I expect that AMD probably are not going to have um, low demand for their products. But switching from AMD, there are a couple of other small things that I'd like to tackle. The first is that Final Fantasy VII a Remake is actually having a PS5 version. This is actually um, courtesy of a Reset Era forum member, Navtra, that's N-A-V-T-R-A. -A. They actually correctly predicted Final Fantasy 16 and some other things for the PS5, so I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. They've said that the PS5 upgrade version has been in the works for a while. They don't have an exact release date as of yet, but they don't think this is going to be a free update. In other words, you're going to be coughing up money for the privilege of playing on this version. The rumour has it, of course, that FF7 Remake is also going to make its way to the PC, so I suppose in some ways, if they are going to be improving visual quality, increasing texture resolution, whatever, that work can directly also benefit the PC versions as well. This is naturally assuming this is even the case and FF7 Remastered does get released on the PC. Either way, 
I personally am really looking forward to playing on the PS5. Um, at the very least, I was playing on the PS4 Pro and I just gave up. I really could not handle the 30 FPS and the long load times. I know that sounds very elitist, but it was just driving me insane. Um, and the low times were just really spoiling my enjoyment of the game. But the, the 30 FPS in combat felt kind of clunky to me. But there is one last story I'd like to tackle, and this is Intel. There has been a recent earnings call of the company, and the Intel PDF, which has provided the Q3 results, has actually given us some insight into the discrete GPUs. According to the company, DG1 is now shipping, whereas DG2 is taped out. Improving our execution to strengthen our core, says one of the images in the slide. Shipping DG1 GPU for revenue, powered on DG2, and her banners AI inference card is shipping and training cards and trials with major CSPs. This is good. It means that at the very least, early engineering sample um, GPUs are being tested internally at Intel. But what we don't know right now is any key details such as the release dates for these cards and exactly what markets Intel will be targeting. Unfortunately, we don't have a full picture yet. Bob Swan said, and I quote, Our first discrete GPU DG1 is shipping now and will be in systems for multiple OEMs in Q4. We also powered on our next generation GPU for client, DG2, based on our XE high performance gaming architecture. This product will take on our discrete graphics capability up the stack into the enthusiast segment. So it seems to indicate that it's not really the successor of DG1, so it doesn't utilize uh, the XELP architecture. Instead, it seems to marry up with the rumors that it would be the XEHPG architecture. Intel have already confirmed that these are going to be manufactured by an external foundry, which is rumoured to be TSMC's 6th NM process. And, yeah, that's kind of all we have right now on the discrete GPU market, like, for Intel. We've heard rumours that it's going to have up to 8 gigabytes of memory, um, possibly with up to 384 execution units, which is actually putting out a ton of performance. But again, when these cards are going to be available, pricing and that type of information, we still have absolutely no understanding at the moment. I'm hoping, I am hoping that these cards do offer great performance and uh, value to customers. Um, but it is kind of interesting because also now we've recently had uh, confirmation that Imagination Technologies will also be getting into the discrete GPU market creating PCIe graphics cards. What I suppose I'm saying is that Intel will, yes, be providing their solution, but even without Intel, AMD and NVIDIA will definitely be facing competition. And it's going to be really interesting to see how all of this unfolds. Um, I, I can't wait to see what's, what the state of the market is going to be in a couple of years' time both in terms of market share and just what's available for customers in terms of different pricing tiers and value. It's going to be really cool. With all of that said, though, thank you very much for watching the video. The normal stuff, like, share, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.